to Christopher Columbus, History, Mystery, Myth, and Controversy. Columbus sailed and lived 500 years ago, so it's hard to untangle the truth from the fiction. There are so many opinions and so many facts and so many mysteries that we really don't know exactly what happened. But we do know that he impacted on our lives every single day. So let's take a look, let's take a trip back 500 years and see what we can learn. Here's a painting of Columbus landing in the New World. Of course, there were no photographers, and he had no paintings with him on his voyage. So this is an imaginary landing. Columbus is kneeling on the shores of the Bahaman island that we think is San Salvador. He's planting a flag for Spain. He was sailing for King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain. In back of him are his three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. And near him is standing a beautiful Indian maiden who is wearing a modest European style dress and looking on Columbus with approval. Of course, this is complete myth. The Indians were pretty naked, which was very shocking to Columbus, and which led him to believe that they were inferior in terms of civilization and uh, suitable for enslavement. Uh, but this Indian maiden is happy that Columbus landed, and they were at first until you know matters went downhill. But here we have a mythical painting, and in Columbus Day, uh, the popular myth of Columbus is celebrated. And in fact, I wrote my own song about it called Columbus's Cabin Girl. It goes like this. In the 1492, on a clear and sunny day, Columbus sailed the ocean sea for India. Now, as you can see by the song, Columbus was not sailing for the Americas or for the Caribbean. He was intending to go to India and then to China. And uh, that's why I say he was sailing for India, which is where he was sailing. He just wound up in the Caribbean. And that is why today the Caribbean is called the West Indies, why the Native Americans are called Indians, and why I am wearing a jacket that was made in China because he hoped to get to India and China and has a European cut. Now, Columbus did wind up in the Caribbean, and here it is. You see the Caribbean Sea, and these are all the islands in it, Cuba, uh, there's the Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, many smaller islands, um, some lands on the uh, mainland of South America and Central America, the coasts are considered part of the Caribbean, and we even have the Florida Keys. Where did we get the name Caribbean? Well, we got it from Columbus. When Columbus arrived in the Caribbean, he met a very peaceful people called the Tainos, and they were part of a large Arawak group. And the Tainos told Columbus about their enemies, the fierce Caribs or canips. Columbus wrote both words down in his journal because the Tainos said that their enemies were very fierce and would eat the flesh of their captives in battle. So Columbus wrote down that they were cannibals, which may or may not have been true, but it was very convenient to think that they were cannibals because that was a good excuse for enslaving them and generally taking advantage of them. So here we have the Caribbean Sea, the beautiful Caribbean Sea, where Columbus landed, although he always thought that he landed in the uh, Indies. Now, what was Columbus doing in the Caribbean in the first place? He was trying to find a western route to the Indies. And this was very important, because going over land was very difficult. You see here, he was sailing for the king and queen of Spain, going over the land, very long, very rough, very difficult, and the land route was controlled by the Turks and the Arabs. Going south and around Africa 
there we go, around the Cape of Good Hope in Africa, that was impossible because the Portuguese controlled the southern African route. In fact, this map, which was made in 1489, is based on a 1488 voyage of Bartomeu, Bartolomeu Dias, who sailed around Africa for Portugal, which was the leading seafaring country at the time. But Columbus, who was born Italian, trained in Portugal, was sailing for the king and queen of Spain, and he managed to convince them after 10 years that if they would fund him, he would sail across the ocean sea and find a direct sea route to the Indies. Well, they didn't entirely believe him. They gave him three little ships, which held about 90 men, they figured, give it a shot, it's only 90 men. If he drowns, he drowns. But they gave him the funds, and he sailed across the ocean sea. Why was Columbus the first? This is a mystery, since there were other capable sailors. But Columbus was dedicated and a visionary, and convinced that he could find his way to the Indies. And here is a picture of Columbus pleading his case before the king and queen of Spain. He's holding up a globe as if to say, look, your majesties, the world is round. Well, this is a bit of a myth, because educated people knew that the world was round. In a very popular Gershwin song, the Gershwins say, they all laughed at Christopher Columbus when he said the world was round. They all laughed when Edison recorded sound. Well, Edison did record sound, but uh, lots of people knew that the world was round. What they did not know was how big it was. In fact, Columbus vastly underestimated the size of the world and thought that he could sail across the sea to the Indies, of course, never knowing about that huge landmass, the Americas. Here is Columbus, as far as we know what he looked like, because there were no contemporary portrait painters of the day. Uh, Columbus was, as far as we know by his contemporaries, a tall man with blue eyes, an aquiline nose, red complexion, and hair that in his youth was red, but by the time he was 40 had turned quite white. That's what we know about Columbus, and we know quite a bit of other things, too. We know that his first voyage was in 1492, and as we continue, we'll learn about all his other voyages and the enormous impact that the Columbus voyages had on both the old world and the new, and the impact that it has on each and every one of us today.